Today back then, what happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. In 1799, Napoleon Bonaparte captures the city of Haffa, Palestine after a five-day siege, which finished off the Ottoman Empire. In 1808, Harvard creates the first college orchestra in the United States. In 1816, Jews are expelled from Lübeck, Germany. In 1820, U.S. President James Monroe signed the Missouri Compromise, allowing Missouri to be admitted to the Union as the 24th state. In 1831, author Edgar Allan Poe is removed from West Point Military Academy. In 1834, the former York Upper Canada is incorporated as Toronto, Canada. In 1835, Volume 1 of Thomas Carlyle's The French Revolution, A History, is accidentally burned by his maid, who used it as a fire starter before it was published. Carlyle had to rewrite it. I wonder if she got to keep her job. In 1836, the Alamo in Texas fell to Mexican General Santa Ana after a 13-day siege. Davy Crockett and Jim Bowie are killed. In 1853, Giuseppe Verdi's opera La Triviata premiered at La Fenice Opera House in Venice. In 1857, U.S. Chief Justice Roger B. Taney announced the Dred Scott decision that Africans could not be U.S. citizens. In 1865, U.S. President Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural ball is tonight. In 1869, the first periodic table of elements is presented today. In 1886, the first United States alternating current power plant begins operation in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Also in 1886, the first U.S. nurses magazine, The Nightingale, begins publication in New York City. In 1896, Charles B. King rides his horseless carriage, the first automobile, in Detroit, Michigan. In 1899, the painkiller aspirin is registered as a trademark. In 1906, Nora Blatch is the first woman elected to the American Society of Civil Engineers. In 1921, police in Sunbury, Pennsylvania issued an edict requiring women to wear skirts at least four inches below the knee. In 1923, the Cardinals announced that their players will wear numbers on their uniforms. In 1924, the Egyptian government opened the mummy case of King Tut. In 1940, the first U.S. TV telecast from an airplane occurs. In 1945, Cologne, Germany is captured by American troops. Also in 1945, George Nissen of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, receives a patent for the first modern trampoline. I bet you I know what George was doing for the rest of the day. In 1946, Pink Floyd guitarist David Gilmour was born today. In 1947, the first U.S. four-engine jet bomber makes its first test flight. In 1950, Silly Putty goes on sale in the United States. In 1951, the trial of Ethel and Julius Rosenberg begins today. In 1957, Dred Scott's grave is rediscovered in St. Louis, Missouri. In 1959, the 11th Emmy Awards occur. Playhouse 90, The Jack Benny Show, and Raymond Burr are winners. In 1961, the first London minicabs are introduced. In 1962, St. Louis, Missouri votes to build a new downtown stadium for the Cardinals. In 1964, American boxer Cassius Clay took the name Muhammad Ali. In 1965, How to Succeed in Business closes at the 46th Street in New York City after 1,415 performances. In 1966, Barry Sadler's song, Ballad of the Green Berets, hits number one and stays for 13 weeks. In 1967, Joseph Stalin's daughter defects to the West and becomes a U.S. citizen. Also in 1967, at the second Academy of Country Music Awards, Merle Haggard and Bonnie Guitar win. In 1967 as well, Jimmy Hoffa enters Lewisburg Federal Prison. And also in 1967, Muhammad Ali is ordered by the Selective Service to be inducted, meaning he was drafted. In 1968, the first of the East LA walkouts take place at several high schools. In 1970, the Beatles release Let It Be. In 1972, Shaquille O'Neal was born today. Also in 1972, Jack Nicklaus passes Arnold Palmer as golf's all-time moneymaker. In 1973, in an exhibition game against the Pirates, Larry Heil of the Twins becomes the first designated hitter in the MLB. 
In 1974, an unnamed Italian industrialist loses a record $1.9 million playing roulette over a five-hour period of time at a Monte Carlo casino. In 1975, the Zapruder film, which shows the assassination of John F. Kennedy, is shown to a national TV audience for the first time. Also in 1975, with the ratification of the Algiers Accord, Iran and Iraq announce a settlement of their border dispute. In 1976, the world's ladies figure skating championship is won by American Dorothy Hamill. In 1978, Hustler magazine publisher Larry Flint is shot by a militant white supremacist in Georgia, leaving Flint wheelchair bound. In 1980, at the seventh Emmy Daytime Award presentation, Susan Lucci loses for the first of many times. In 1981, the most trusted man in America, TV journalist Walter Cronkite signed off the CBS Evening News for the last time tonight. In 1982, today was the NBA highest scoring game ever. In three overtimes, San Antonio beat Milwaukee 171 to 166. In 1983, the U.S. Football League begins its first season. In 1985, future undisputed world heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson wins his first professional fight. Also in 1985, Ewell Brenner appears in his 4,500th performance of The King and I. In 1986, American painter Georgia O'Keeffe dies at age 98. In 1987, the Herald of Free Enterprise Ferry capsizes in the North Sea, killing 193 people. Also in 1987, a 6.8 earthquake hits Ecuador, killing 100 people. In 1988, with her 1,205th victory, Julie Crone becomes the most winning female jockey ever. In 1990, the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird sets a transcontinental record by flying 2,404 miles in one hour, eight minutes, and 17 seconds. In 1991, the Persian Gulf War ends with U.S. President George H.W. Bush telling Congress that aggression is defeated, the war is over. In 1992, the Michelangelo computer virus begins to affect computers. In 1995, at the 9th American Comedy Awards, Rodney Dangerfield wins. In 1998, the British Union flag begins to be flown full mast over Buckingham Palace whenever the British monarch is not in residence. In 2000, today's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees include Eric Clapton, Earth, Wind & Fire, Love & Spoonful, The Moon Glows, Bonnie Raitt, James Taylor, Nat King Cole, Billie Holiday, and Clive Davis. In 2008, a Palestinian gunman shoots and kills eight students and critically injures 11 in the library of a yeshiva in Jerusalem, Israel. In 2010, at the 30th Razzie Awards, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen wins. In 2012, Columbia Records releases Bruce Springsteen's 17th studio album called Wrecking Ball. In 2013, Microsoft is fined $731 million by the Euro Commission for failing to respect an antitrust settlement for providing options to choose alternative web browsers. In 2015, the U.S. State Department charges two Vietnamese and a Canadian with cyber fraud for stealing 1 billion email addresses to use for spam. And I'm sure mine was on that list. In 2016, former U.S. First Lady and actress Nancy Reagan passed away today. In 2017, U.S. President Donald Trump signs his second executive order barring travelers from six mostly Muslim countries for the next 90 days. Also in 2017, WikiLeaks publishes Vault 7 level CIA documents which detail the hacking and surveillance techniques they use. In 2018, the oldest message in a bottle is found in Western Australia, having been thrown from the German ship Paula 132 years ago on June 12, 1886. Also in 2018, after having sunk in 1942, the U.S. World War II aircraft carrier USS Lexington is rediscovered in Australia's Coral Sea. Also in 2018, Forbes names Amazon founder Jeff Bezos the world's richest person for the first time based on his worth of $112 billion. Bill Gates falls to number two, so is barely able to pay his bills. And lastly in 2021, 
the U.S. Senate passes the $1.9 trillion COVID-19 relief bill called the American Rescue Plan. That was March 6th. I just know you loved it, so I have put more of my videos right there in front of you. All you have to do is click. I already did the hard part.